In the world of sports, performance is king. To athletes, the body is a machine, trained to accomplish a certain movement to perfection. Whether the machine is shiny or covered in rust does not matter, as long as it fulfills its function. And yet, some sportsmen showcase impressive physiques that would put even that of bodybuilders to shame. Chinese weightlifters being a perfect example. With their bulging delts and six-packs, they possess a level of aesthetics that many would kill to have, while also performing at a high level. So how do they do it? Why do Chinese weightlifters look so good? With the explosion of social media also came the democratization of niche sports, such as Oli lifting. While it has existed for more than 200 years in its competitive form, it was far from being popular with a general audience. That is, before the boom of YouTube fitness and the viral weightlifting videos that came with it. Unsurprisingly, the athletes that attracted the most curiosity were the aesthetic ones, with sports like CrossFit skyrocketing in participants because of it. As a result, it also gave birth to the rise of Chinese weightlifters, who quickly became icons of muscularity online. This image has been recently tarnished by pictures that have emerged of Luke Zhaojun, a Chinese athlete who was renowned for his shredded body, but who appeared in the media recently looking like a decrepit version of himself. Of course, storied accusations quickly followed, with some influencers going as far as to say that this was the proof that his physique was due entirely to drugs and had nothing to do with his training. For my part, I'm not going to sit there and tell you this isn't true. The Chinese team has a long history of dodgy practices, and they're not the only ones. As such, it is absolutely possible that this reverse transformation is due to Lu being off cycle. However, it doesn't change the fact that every Chinese weightlifter is more aesthetic on average than their international counterparts, with most of them looking perfectly achievable naturally. As such, the question of whether or not they look like that because of drugs doesn't interest me, because you could achieve similar results without pinning. Therefore, I will be focusing entirely on their methods. The first answer that comes to mind would be to say that they look good because of the lifts they do, which would point us towards Olympic lifts like the clean and snatch. I'm going to pop your bubble right now. These movements aren't the reason for these aesthetic physiques. Don't get me wrong, they absolutely do grow your muscles, and I'm not saying that compound movements don't work. Actually, they work the best because they offer more overall stimulus at once. The key is in the type of muscles they grow and the fashion in which they do so. Only lifts are concentric heavy, meaning they focus more on the ability of the muscle to contract, in a pure expression of explosive power. The only exception being the descent into the catch position that is usually performed as fast and efficiently as possible, reducing the amount of time the muscle spends lengthening. Then there is also the fact that they mostly rely on technique, making the quest for effective leverages a priority over the pursuit of muscles. Compared to compounds like squats or bench press, this makes these movements less optimal for hypertrophy. Only lifters still get good development from them, especially in the upper back, shoulders and legs, but they're not enough to explain these aesthetic physiques, and neither do the accessory movements used by the Chinese school of weightlifting, namely squats, deadlifts 
and pressing variations. We must then ask ourselves, what muscles make an aesthetic physique? And why are they so developed on Chinese lifters in particular? While the overall appeal of a body remains entirely subjective, there are some commonalities that can be found amongst all aesthetic physiques, which all invariably center around the upper body. The world doesn't fawn over Greek statues because of their massive calves. They ended up becoming blueprints of the perfect male body due to their chiseled chests, sculpted abs and overall limb development. The same can be said for Chinese holy lifters. It is their upper bodies, above all things, that have earned them such praises. And yet, most of the so-called beach muscles that make a physique so appealing are left relatively untouched by their compound movements of choice, meaning that the results come from somewhere else. And while at first glance, the training of these athletes consists exclusively in holy lifts and variations, a more detailed inspection reveals that there exists a portion of their regimen that can only be described as bodybuilding training, while they dedicate a non-negligible portion of their time working on muscles that don't appear essential to their sport. When they're not hammering the main movers, Chinese lifters can be found towing away with more classical muscle building tools such as pull-ups, shoulder elevations, and dips. I will not be discussing whether or not this practice is optimal for weightlifting, because it's not my lane, but considering the fact that the Chinese Olympic lifting team has won 38 gold medals, more than double the amount claimed by the USA, it'd be hard to argue otherwise. What I find fascinating is how men who train strictly for strength manage to sneak in enough hypertrophy work to look so fantastic. The first thing that struck me is the fact that bodybuilding training is like a fun recreation to them. This doesn't mean they don't train hard, but they're not as intense as with their main lifts. You'll often see five or six dudes doing the same exercise, just shooting the shit and having a good time. That's a good reminder. To develop smaller muscle groups, you just have to train them. It sounds silly, but many people get stuck in the big mover mindset of thinking that if you don't shoot blood out of your eyes while performing a lift, then it's not worth doing in the first place. Intensity is relative, and including isolation lifts in your program can offer a very welcome break from the intense mental and physical strain of heavy compounds, while also working as active recovery and nicely rounding up your physique to boot. The second takeaway is that they're not afraid of diversifying their training. Specificity is not as vital for bodybuilding as it is for Olympic weightlifting or other strength sports, because you don't have to hyperfocus on two or three lifts. Keeping up super high levels of technicity and neurological adaptation is therefore needed. As long as the movement you're doing develops the muscle you're targeting, it will have carryover to other movements used for hypertrophy work. And that's really all the specificity you need. This doesn't mean that you should have 15 variations for each muscle, but you don't have to be married to only one lift for the rest of your life. Something that Chinese lifters most likely enjoy a lot, considering how much time they spend perfecting their technical mastery of the snatch and clean. Not only are these bodybuilding sessions a welcome break recovery-wise, but they also serve as a mental refresher to keep compound lifts fresh and exciting. This is made evident by the type of lifts they perform during these sessions 
and the muscles they target. While clean, snatches, squats and deadlifts will mostly grow your posterior chain and legs, the philosophy of Chinese lifters regarding the bodybuilding portion of their training is the exact opposite, and heavily biases towards developing the shoulders, traps, abs, chest, lats and arms, which are all located in the upper body. This is our third clue, and the one you should have seen coming. Their physiques look so good, because they train lifts that target the muscles responsible for an aesthetic body. While technically still counting as polyarticular movements, we see that the number of muscles involved drastically decreases from lifts such as the clean or squat, which require assistance from the entire body. While this is not strictly speaking isolation work, the entire concept is mostly a myth to begin with, as you can never truly isolate a muscle. However, you can bias it by removing as many accessory movers from the equation as possible, which is where lifts like the upright row come into play. That movement, when done properly, provides excellent stimulus for the shoulders, but it's not necessarily the best accessory to boost your pressing strength, which itself might not be sufficient to maximize shoulder growth. There is therefore an obvious aesthetic goal at play here, and the bro level of direct ab work these guys do is proof of it. Contrary to popular belief, Having a six-pack does not mean that you have a strong core. Having a strong core means that you have a strong core. Most of the time, the movements that will best train your ability to stabilize the core won't be the ones to give you that six-pack, because they focus more on rigidity, aka isometric contraction, as opposed to something like a sit-up that will challenge the ability of the muscle to stretch and contract, providing a full range of eccentric and concentric contractions. So next time someone tells you to just do compound movements for abs, show them this footage. There's a reason why everyone on the Chinese team rocks a six-pack, from senior to rookie. Same logic applies to every muscle group. If hyper-specialists like pro Oli lifters can apply these methods to grow, so can you. The lesson here is simple. If you want a muscle to grow, you have to target it in particular. Regardless of the latest sensation about Luke Zhao Zhen having lost all his gains, there is no denying that the guy's physique was tremendous, especially his shoulders and traps, which coincidentally also happened to be worked by the lift coined after his name, the Lou Rays. If you want to understand why a certain muscle is particularly developed in a given group of individuals, just follow the crumbs. They will inevitably lead you to a lift that is done specifically to target it. Chinese lifters have massive and jacked upper backs. Why? Because they do pull-ups and rows. Chinese lifters have massive and jacked shoulders. Why? Because they do dips and elevations. This is the first common denominator amongst all aesthetic Oli lifters. But it's not enough to explain why these guys look so good. There is actually a second denominator, one that might actually be even more important than building muscle, namely body composition. It's time to discuss the elephant in the room. Leanness. All of these guys are ripped. When people say that Chinese weightlifters look good, 
they are only really talking about certain weight categories. Anything about the 89 kg class starts to slip into fluffy territory. Tian Tao being a perfect example. The difference between his 80 and 90 plus kilogram physiques truly showcasing how difficult it is to stay aesthetic at a higher body fat. This is the reason why a lot of natural bodybuilders sacrifice size in exchange for definition and prioritize the loss of adipose tissue over the conservation of overall mass in order to create the illusion of a bigger and fuller physique. This also explains why many attribute Chinese weightlifters' looks to drug use. It is undeniable that the cycling of anabolic hormones greatly facilitates fat loss, making muscles much more visible. Add to that the fact that Asian lifters have more compact builds, and it's the perfect storm. Even with less overall lean mass, every muscle gets enhanced by a mix of low body fat and frame advantage. It is undeniable that Chinese weightlifters greatly benefit from their bodily structure. From Tian Tao to Lu Xiaojun to Li Dain, these guys usually top off at 5 feet 8, which is average or below average in most Western nations. Not only does this give them an upper end at only lifting due to favorable leverages, but it also makes them look stockier their limb, leg and torso length leaving less raw estate for muscle to spread on, making for a more muscular look. This is great news, considering that this is also true for the majority of the male population. And since these men are selected on athleticism and not their ability to put on size, it's not like there's a strong genetic bias at play here regarding muscle building. This is immediately evident when looking at them in a group. While you do see some outliers with outstanding aesthetics who might or might not be dabbling in the sauce, you can also see a lot of more natural looking bodies, even on guys no older than 25, who nonetheless still look tremendous. If men whose sole pursuit is Olympic weightlifting manage to achieve such physiques through offshoot bodybuilding sessions, imagine what someone who dedicates all his effort towards building the greatest body possible can achieve. So if you want to reach that golden Xiaojun aesthetic, it might be time for you to take a page out of his book and sprinkle some Chinese oily lifting wisdom on your training.